And I'm going to say angels. This is going to be the full moon reading. Um, full moon in Taurus. It is a mini moon, not a super moon this time around. The hunter's moon It is a blue moon, a rare moon, um, because it's a blue moon. For one thing, we haven't had one, um, I forget, since one year, since what year? Hmm. But what else makes it rare or somewhat rare is that it's fall, it's the full moon falling on Halloween. And that hasn't happened since 1944. I recall that one. Um, and what else makes it somewhat rare is that the moon uh, will be in like exact conjunction with the planet Uranus, where um, which has been located in Taurus for like the past uh, year and a half or so um, and is supposed to be there for a total of like seven, eight years, currently in retrograde, ruler of the sign of Aquarius. Um, what else? I did a lot of talking about the the moon and uh, what I felt it meant for each sign and what I felt it meant in general and reading from the almanac, uh, what they said it's about in the general reading, um, sort of accidentally, but I guess on purpose. Um, I guess that's how it was meant to be. So I, I won't, won't be doing that again today um, with this reading. I'm just going to get straight to it and I will um, try to remember to timestamp everything in the general reading. So if you just want to go straight to the parts where I talk about the moon and find your sign or your signs, you know, sun, moon, rising, um, or maybe your mate signs or whatever, uh, I'll try to make that as easy as possible for you to do. Uh, all the information is going to be in the general. So like I said, we'll begin with the Nine of Swords. Your worries and fears aren't real. They're fueled by focusing on the negative, which gives power to that of what you're afraid. Stop worrying. Let go of fear and everything will be okay. So I don't think this is only about fear. I think for some people, I mean, it it can always be about anxiety also for some people. Um, but I, I think it may be anxiety like on a deeper level, like maybe clinically like somebody is really suffering from anxiety and maybe needs medication and or depression. It can be about an inability to sleep. Um, I think some may be having like nightmares and stuff. And I, there is a full moon in this picture. So um, if you're not feeling that already, but you begin to, I, I'd say more toward the beginning of this period rather than uh, the end, I usually make my moon readings, you know, for about two weeks out. Um, I think maybe towards the beginning, some of us may be feeling this way. One of those ways I've described, um, whether it is just that you need a nap or maybe you need someone to talk to or some medication even. Nine of Swords. The next card is Release or Death. It is in reverse. This is the way it looks. White Peacock. On it, it's time to release the past and to move on to something new. This ending is the first step on the way to a happier future. So um, this represents the, the sign of Scorpio, which is pretty important in this period too right now. Uh, the sun entered Scorpio on the 22nd. The first day of Scorpio season was the 23rd. And um, Scorpio is Taurus's mirror sign, you know, axis, um, opposite axis. So speaking of Taurus, the next card here is uh, Major Arcana card three, the Empress. Time to hop into action. Use your natural creativity to bring forth prosperity and success. And these two are the two energies that I think will be feeling uh, the strongest over this period of the next two weeks. The energy of death, which is um, also about rebirth and energies of fertility, fresh ideas and um, creativity, like bursts of creativity. Oh, I know what to do. You know, I'll make this. I'll get into this business. I'll do that. And really being um, proactive about those things. It's also an energy of abundance. And it can be fertility in a very literal sense too, finding out that you're pregnant or um, using this as a good time to get pregnant if that's what you're wanting to do. I just opened right to that nine of swords again and through the... Um, death card there. Isn't that funny? The same exact place. Um, and it's followed by the Ace of Cups, by the way. So putting in now the, and then the next card is more of the Scorpio energy with Major Arcana card 20, Renewal or Judgment. It's time to get clarity on your life purpose and to make changes so that you're on the path most on the path most divinely suited to you. Forgive what has been without judgment and fearlessly embrace what's to come. 
a lot of major arcana here. The next one's in reverse, but it is major arcana card strength, just so you can see. Most directly represents the sign of Leo, of course. Um, and in the general reading, there was a lot of this Taurus, Leo, Scorpio. Um, I'll have to look into why the Leo might be so strong. I'm not really sure. I can't think of any planets that are located there right now or anything, but it is happening. Uh, true strength is displayed through kindness, forgiveness, and compassion. You have tremendous personal power and courage. And then this may be the, mo the Scorpio energy yet again with the Page of Cups. Intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase and you have heightened psychic abilities. So... Um, all of those cards were very positive energies once we move beyond the Nine of Swords. And I think that that should give you an inclination of um, the kind of energy that's actually going to be around us. Positive, but you may have something going on or just be feeling away, as they say. Um, maybe getting closer to the beginning of the period. And I think you will get progressively better as um, the energy does around you as well. So I shuffled the card before I started, and then I showed you with what I ended up, and now I've just mixed those up again. Put these in the middle. And now we're beginning with the Ace of Swords, brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth in the situation, and a challenging beginning. The next card is also of the air uh, element. It is Major Arcana card, the Magician. You are ready. You have the resources or the ability to manifest them, and life is magical. Uh, the magician or the ace of air could be tied to the sign of Gemini, most specifically. And I say that because both Mercury and Venus, both of Gemini's rulers, currently located in Libra. That's the other place. That's the other reason, maybe, that this um, air energy is showing up. But the magician, magician does most directly. Uh, correlate to the sign of Gemini and it is about having you know being able to manifest whatever it is you're attempting to manifest you're wanting to do even if you don't feel like you you're up to it they're telling you you have the ability to do it page of swords also is maybe potentially a Gemini or a Libra can be an Aquarius too um we just talked about how Aquarius is also linked to all of this being uh, ruled by Uranus where Taurus um, which is located in Taurus Logical, truthful, curious, and undiplomatic. This is an intellectual challenge that calls upon your ability to think of a matching solution. If helpful information is put to you bluntly, accept the message without being bothered by the messenger. So something may just get blurted out, um, but it's information that you need that will lead to clarity. And you definitely need clarity and information when it comes to the moon, because the moon is about secrets and darkness and... Um, stuff that the universe has not shared with us yet that you know it's going to tell us on a need to know basis you know when the universe feels we need to know that's when we'll know it is major arcana card 18 which equals nine the nines are important to me um th during this period i explained why during the the general um but one of the reasons is that uh it has the this type of moon hasn't occurred, like I said, since 1944. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. And it's, enough, it's the moon again. Isn't that crazy? Such strong energy. I mean, all the readings that I've done this period, really, really strong energy. It's important to trust your intuition. Even if you're unsure of what's happening, all will be revealed soon, so worry is unnecessary. All may be revealed by a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes, or by you paying attention to signs and synchronicities that are giving you information or in other aspects of your intuition and or uh, psychic awareness. So we'll put these two moons back. And then the page, the magician the ace okay i'm going to begin here with this card uh do a spread for singles couples people in separation whatever your situation is it is fine this reading can be for you beginning with this top card which will represent uh any divine being as an individual and or couple all right Yes, divine being and or couple. It is the queen of pentacles, which most directly represents the sign of Taurus, where our moon is. So this is perfect. 
thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. Make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. The queen of earth is a Taurus, most directly, like in traditional tarot practice, the fixed sign is the queen, you know, of whatever, a given element. Um, but also could, of course, be a Virgo or Capricorn or someone like into those traits or attributes. Is that in frame? Okay. Um, recent past. Ace of Pentacles. So recent past may not have happened yet. <laughs> um, you know, because again, this is the moon reading. So it's going forward. This can be in the big toward the beginning of the week. Maybe this is what makes you feel better for coming off the nine of swords. Um, and for some of you, it may, it may indeed have happened already. The inflow of abundance, a promising business venture, important documents or contracts. Near future. The Eight of Cups, a desire to move on. The search for something more meaningful, spiritual and emotional growth. Leaving something behind or moving and or moving towards something. And that that something doesn't have to, people think like immediately like, oh no, I'm going to break up with my mate or whatever it is. Um, it can be just leaving like the energy of broke behind. And that's what you're feeling emotional about. Just feeling really good. Like I thought that I was, you know, not going to have any uh, an ability to pay my rent or whatever the case is. So that it does give you a sigh of relief and a feeling of, you know, um, just feeling emotional. And for some of us, it may push us to be more spiritual and or even um, religious. Like, oh, I need to go to church. I need to get on my knees and pray, whatever the case is. So that can be what this Ace of Cups is. Um, masculine's higher, higher self. The Page of Fire, Page of Wands. Outgoing, creative, confident, and mischievous. Use... News and of uh, news of an exciting new endeavor. Use your originality and ingenuity. The page of fire is perhaps that Leo energy that keeps coming up, um, or an, an Aries or Sagittarius or someone likened to those traits or attributes. There's another full moon here with this too. Um, so that definitely we could be getting messages, and it may be in particular consideration of the fact that Mercury goes direct on the third. That may also be another reason why the Gemini energy was popping up and we saw um, the, all those swords and that we started with the nine of swords because while Mercury is still in retrograde these next couple days, we could be feeling, you know, kind of funky. And then when it goes direct, energy lets up and then all this stuff starts happening. Mon checks and money that you're waiting on, all of a sudden it's, it's in the mail. Positive things are happening. Um Blocks to individual or shared progress. So if you're looking at it as, as just about yourself or as a couple, this is the card. King of Swords. Brilliant, impartial, professional, and undiplomatic. Speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice and balance mental and emotional concerns. Uh, the King of Air or Swords is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius again, or someone likened to those traits or attributes could very well be representing the planet Mercury or the planet Venus themselves. Uh, also, moving on from just an individual basis on a personal level, but to more of a global level, since um, I do think that that's going to be an, an overarching um, theme of this moon's energy because Uranus and Aquarius, Aquarius, which it rules, are all about freedom and humanity and, you know, trying to... Um, work toward the greater good and stuff. So um, definitely could be connected to that. And maybe even to our politics, there are a number of countries that are going back on lockdown. Uh, Germany, France, I believe it was. I saw Great Britain. Who knows? The United States may have to do something. We also have our elections underway. Also on the third, the day that Mercury goes direct, um, our president is a Gemini. Uh, he, so he's ruled by Mercury. That could be, you know, what, the, what this King of Swords is about. It is a block. All right. Or a challenge. The King of Swords can be someone who is like stubborn to a fault. Uh, so maybe that's the block. He's also somebody who is um, known for saying what he means and meaning what he says. Maybe that's the block that he's not doing that. He's not being himself. So what can the feminine do? to help herself, like, you know, despite this block, what can she do about it? Two of Cups. You're falling in love or experiencing a deepening of emotion in your current relationships. Marriages or romantic partnerships in distress 
can still be saved. Don't give up. So this may be about you initiating. This may be about you um, offering somebody forgiveness or an apology to work something out. It doesn't have to be a romantic partnership, but it very well can be. It can be any kind of, you know, partnership though. Um, you know, two friends, BFF, um, co-worker, business partner, whatever the case may be. That's what you can do to help yourself. And what the masculine can do to help himself, it is the king of cups. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. The king of cups is warm-hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful, and may be a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or someone likened to those traits or attributes who is in your life, masculine, guided to uh, draw on these kinds of traits, generosity, romance, caring, loving, sensitive, in touch with your feelings, maybe open to talking about them. If that's been blocked, getting into that space that allows you to talk about them. Same thing for you, feminine. That's been blocked, you have something to say, or you, there's somebody who's been wanting to say something to you, but you've been, eh, <laughs> this is the time to allow the energy to come through. What the universe would have us both or each um, do to help ourselves, and the universe even wants to help us with, but we have to allow it to, um, because we have free will, so we don't have, we could block that too. But um, what we, if we want to make the choice to allow the universe to help us, it wants to help us with Something that's going to come about very suddenly um, and or it wants to like send us amazing clarity and messages like aha moments. Major Arcana card 16, the tower. Important changes are coming to your life that will require you to take action. Don't hesitate to move in new directions that you know are right for you. And for some, this can be a little bit more literal and have to do with an actual move um, or home, a structure, a tower. Sometimes it's about an actual tower. And again, all the cards are positive. So it may be cohabitation, maybe buying, selling, all of which um, I would recommend you do after the third, after Mercury is direct, if you have, an, if you have a choice of t about it. And... Um, the outcome, boom, the wheel. Major Arcana card 10 represents the planet Jupiter and the sign of Sagittarius, which it rules. That's most directly, but it is also connected to the fixed sign. So here we go again, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Leo. So maybe that's why all the Leo stuff um, keeps popping up. The All four of the fixed signs uh, super activated, it seems. Now I'm gonna do a spread um, specifically on the masculine feeling. So this one will be a little bit more romantic. Uh, the wheel, of course, though, is saying that something really good uh, and positive is coming into our life. A time of positive change, a situation suddenly moves forward, could very well be with this energy, right? This is a very sudden energy. I don't read it the way that, you know, most seem to. And like, oh my God, it's a tower, that's horrible. No, uh, it's just something that comes in sudden, sort of knocks you over, knocks you off your feet. You, you weren't ready. Um, or again, it's a major aha moment. And so it's like, oh, like wow, I, I can't believe it. Or it may come in like sudden um, communication, sudden unexpected phone call, somebody you didn't expect to speak to, letter, note, or again, maybe something in the mail, checks in the mail, and it's positive. But it's like, just like, oh, I really wasn't expecting this to come now. Thank God. So it's sudden positive change. Situation suddenly moves forward. So this is that word moves again. And again, somebody could be literally moving or looking to move and something's been held up and blocked. That, en that energy is going to free up now. Fortune is on your side. I am going to mix these cards up. And look what I opened to again. This nine of swords with the ace of cups underneath it. So that, so they just keep telling us or reminding us that if you feel that way, like the Nine of Swords, um, it is just a feeling and something that you can hopefully work through and you should talk to somebody else about if you need. That doesn't mean you have to go to a doctor or, you know, professional. Some of you may want to. Maybe you get therapy or counseling or whatever. You call in for a session. 
Um, but for some, it, maybe it's just a friend or maybe it's, you know, a romantic interest, a mate. You've just been needing to talk to, to somebody or to a specific person. And it's like, I got to take the, the opportunity to go ahead and do it. So we're mixing up these again. Our two moons that were back to back. I'm separating them. So if they show up together again, <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. All right, here we go. For the spread from the perspective of the divine masculine. I also saw twice this week, Lord Ganesha. And so I pulled out a couple of other decks that I believe he appears in. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with them, but I have them out. One is the Ascended Masters deck, and I shuffled them really good, and not at any time did I see, um, you know, that, that card that usually shows up in connection with death. I don't even want to say what the card is, say the name of it. <laughs> um, although I do feel that the Hunter's Moon in general is a time of year when um, there is a lot of like these murders, maybe with police or things like that. And um, I think we already had three this week uh, in the national news. So maybe some will continue. Also, um, you know, celebrities. And we, it seems, we seem to have begun with uh, Sean Connery, who was 90. So there's that nine again, too. But I don't think that... Um, any of us necessarily, like those of you who are watching the video, will have anything happen, you know, close to you, you know, connected to you. Because I have not seen the card. Unless, God forbid, we see it when I pull the cards out to use them. So we're beginning now with the Nine of Cups, overall energy of the Nine of Cups. Now's the time when your dreams come true. Don't worry about how this will happen. Just give gratitude to God for all that you have and all that's still to come. So the Nine of Cups is very much a card like the star which again represents the sign of Aquarius. So it's connected to the planet Uranus, which is located in Taurus. I think those, we're getting these messages. I've seen the Nine of Cups in several of my readings. Um, I've done a lot of the Zodiac readings already, the monthlies. I have a weekly. I'm going to do the love reading after this. And I just keep seeing the Nine of Cups. In fact, in all of the um, Zodiac readings that I've done, the card representing the, you know, the given sign has been a nine every single time. And the nine of cups has shown up many, many times in each of those readings. But the, the first card has been some kind of nine, whether it's the hermit or the nine of pentacles, the nine of cups, you know, it's always been a positive card. So anyway, what's behind this? Let's see. It's in reverse, but it is major arcana card seven, the chariot, which can also be tied to moving or movement. So again, maybe somebody's um, at the time or right now, somebody's move or, um, or metaphoric movement has been sort of blocked and held up, but this freeing up soon. And it may be something that you've been praying for. Like, I, I, you know, dear God, please make this happen. Also, somebody may have car trouble and don't give up like right away with the car trouble. Take the time to, you know, maybe say a, a few prayer, if you don't believe in prayer, you know, to meditate on it, whatever it is, you know, like a dear God, fix this situation. And I, th I think you'll be pleased with, with the outcome, all right? If you believe me, trust me, and really put that energy of belief and trust into the prayer when it happens. And this is if you could stop by police too. I want you to do this, okay? Uh, and I think everything will be fine. So we're starting off already good. Maybe we've been praying for you know, healing in our relationship to, so that we can end a relationship, so we can bring one together, so we can strengthen one. Different strokes for different folks, but it's positive energy. So even if it is about an ending, it's something that is beneficial to us and or that we even want it. Because the Nine of Cups is about prayers being answered, wishes being granted, dreams coming true. And also like a yes. If you had a yes or no question, particularly in love, it, the answer is yes. So, um... Divine Feminine. We're starting with her. Two of Swords. Procrastination and worrying about what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. 
If you're torn between your own desires and someone else's, follow your inner guidance. So there is something that we're wanting to do. And I've just, I've seen um, also people who, again, maybe this is why I was meant to mention um, breakups and getting out of a relationship too. People who were needing to get out of relationships, but were thinking about it in terms of breaking up a family. And so they were afraid, even though they knew that they needed to, it's toxic, it's possibly even abusive. Uh, maybe that's why the Nine of Swords is showing up for you also, right? You have your severe anxiety, depression, uh, fear even, maybe of this relationship and this person. They're a narcissist, perhaps. That's another meaning possibly of the ma magician, you know, from a negative perspective. And so you need out. But because you believe that you're supposed to remain together or you're concerned about what other people will think about you getting out and maybe not having succeeded at this relationship, you are still there. Please do do what you need to do, or at least consider it getting out if you're in some kind of trouble or something, please. Um, but for others of us, you know, it's a, it's a more, it's not that, it's not as serious. It is, there's some sort of differences. It's an age difference. It is a racial difference. It is, um, you know, religious or spiritual or um, some sort of belief system, ideology, maybe political affiliation, you know, and I'm, I'm telling you to do it. I, I probably couldn't do it if that's what it was either. <laughs> not not this time around, at least, um, with what um, it can mean to have a particular political um, uh, affiliation, the implications as to what else in which you may believe, you know, seem to be tied to it, particularly this time around, 2020. Uh, but it, it's something like that divine feminine we have a decision to make we've already made it the way that i pick up the card it's in our heart it's in our gut we know what we're supposed to do but we're afraid to do that um the masculine as it relates to the feminine and and this card Major Arcana card three is back the empress so again this represents the planet venus ruler of the signs of taurus and libra uh, where she is currently located, and um, Gemini as well, esoteric ruler of the sign of Gemini. It's time to hop into action. Use your natural creativity to bring forth prosperity and success in your life. So this is new energy for the relationship potentially, okay? Fertile energy. Masculine as it relates to himself, eight of swords. So there's some fear or... Um, feelings of being stuck in a situation for him too. For some of you, maybe this isn't your energy itself, but you're dealing with the situation because it's masculine who's going through something like that. He he won't leave, you know, a situation that he's in that's toxic, you know, or vice versa. It could go either way. Or maybe you're both in some sort of situation. That's possible too. It's so easy to convince yourself that you're trapped when you really aren't. Trust that God will lift you to new heights and give you a greater sense of self-confidence if you first affirm your freedom. Somebody may be pregnant, though. And they look at these two birds. They're together. They're happy. But this other one is like, hmm, what's up with that? And then this one is like, all of y'all need to get it together. <laughs> you see, it looks like he's yelling at them. Um, and then this says bunting. I don't know if that's what this kind of bird is. It's called a bunting. But I thought about baby bunting. You know, that you put in the crib and then this, the empress can be about, um, of course, pregnancy or um, maybe this is you as a mother and the father of your child is with whom you have some sort of problem or vice versa. For the masculine, he feels stuck uh, because somebody is pregnant or is the mother of his child or something going on with his own mother. Maybe it's his own mother that's like, I don't want, I don't like that girl for you. I don't like that guy for you or whatever the case is. Um, we know how some of us, is, even when we're grown, we, we can listen to those sort of things. If mom and dad don't like them, they might write me out the wheel or who knows what might happen, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, for somebody, this is a situation of there's, uh, there's pregnancy and or um, a child or children that are in the mix that's making it feel difficult. But I feel maybe even again, like I said, young children, like baby uh, with this bunting here. The masculine's 
feel higher feelings from like his higher self with regard to the union or connection itself, whether energetic or you're dealing with each other in person. This this spread is also for singles, couples, people in separation, whatever your situation is. And boom. Okay, this is him wanting to come to the connection. Um and maybe very well deciding to do it. This it's all about wishing on a star, you know, like that energy of Aquarius. And I see a lot of the Taurus here too, with all this greenery, the frog, the potted plant. I see the Scorpio here too, the butterfly. Um, and of course, the Knight of Cups can be representative of a Scorpio as well as a, a Cancer or a Pisces or someone likened to those traits or attributes. It's often somebody that was in our life already before that wants to return to it, whether we were in a relationship with them romantically before or if they were a friend or something and they're coming back and maybe this time around it's going to turn into a romantic relationship. The Prince of Cups or Knight of Cups is romantic, flirtatious, introspective and enchanting. A deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. So this can be tied to the tower too and to the wheel, right? Something very unexpected. Things can move very quickly during such whirlwind encounters. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. And that could definitely be a message to the feminine too. She's the one here. Um, really needing to make a decision in this, you know, sort of stuck in this energy of indecision and it's mirroring that Knight of Cups, right? They're like bookends. Overall, the moon is back. <laughs> it's important to trust your intuition. Even if you're unsure of what's happening, all will be revealed soon. So worry is unnecessary. Like if your intuition is saying, call her, call him or write them, Go here, go there. You may bump into the so-and-so. Maybe it's not telling you that much information. It's just saying, go down to that restaurant in the corner and sit at a table by yourself and order a drink. And you're like, why is, why is my, you know, spirit telling me to do that? And that if you listen to it, that may be the time that you go out and you sit down and then boom, here comes the, the person walking past or something like that. Um, make sure that any signs or synchronicities that you experience, you do um, pay attention to and any gut feelings, inclinations. This is really saying that your psychic abilities, awareness is heightened right now. You may have dreams also. Nine of Cups, remember, is our overall energy. It can definitely be about dreams uh, and dreams that, that manifest into reality. So you may want to write your dreams down um, when you wake up so that you don't you know, forget them. You, need, you can go back and, and revisit and, and figure them out and interpret things. But here... I, I see again this uh, some of the same energies we've been talking about. This isn't a lion, but it's a big cat, you know. So I'm still getting more of this Leo, Scorpio. All right. Um, what the masculine would have the feminine, what kind of energy he would have her give to the union or connection if it were up to him. It is the page of swords. Logical, truthful, curious, and undiplomatic. This is an intellectual challenge that calls upon your ability to think of a matching solution. If helpful information is put to you bluntly, accept the message without being bothered by the messenger. So this can be him wanting her to be open to, again, making some sort of contact, whether she's initiating it or she's receiving it. Like, accept the message, hear me out, without being bothered by the messenger. Yes, I know I screwed up. The, don't hang up the phone. You know, it can be like that. Um, page of swords, again, possibly a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. News, information coming to you. What energy the masculine himself um, is willing to give in connection to this period. And it is the four of wands. So this is an energy of commitment. It's sitting here underneath the Knight of Cups. Commitment, um, maybe again, home, cohabitation, marriage, other contracts. It's time to kick back, relax, and to celebrate all that you have. Joy arises from success in your career, the completion of a project, or a very happy home life.
could easily be about cohabitation or meeting somebody or deepening of a commitment. Again, an ex or somebody coming back into your life and starting something up with you. Um, just whatever would make you feel really happy and at home and full of joy and contentment. And like, I could die right now in this moment and it would be fine because I, I, I want nothing else. You know, every now and then you have these moments where it's like, okay, you know, I, I, I've... I've lived in this bar. I, I feel really good. And if I went right now, I'd be satisfied with what I've experienced. We they tend not to last that long. We, <laughs> they say, you know, we, you know, we want to stick around, but for a moment. Uh, what the universe would have each of us um, give, what kind of energy each of us we should give to the you know, connection this week. And the universe, again, even wants to help us with this. But we have free will, so we have to decide whether we are going to allow it to or not, is temperance. It's called balance in this deck. Major Arcana card 14 represents the sign of Sagittarius. So maybe tied to that page of wands that was representing the masculine before. By merging varying points of view, you can generate an extraordinary new idea. Compromise with others and collaborate to discover a better solution. So this is about negotiations. Again, maybe you have some sort of contract or commitment. Resolving differences, apologies, forgiveness, looking past differences like you're black, I'm white. How are we going to make this work? Oh, I got it. I know how we can make it work. We'll just be striped or polka dotted or whatever. Or maybe it doesn't matter. Who cares? You stay black and I'll stay white. And, and who cares? Still, it's about figuring things out. Also, restoration, recovery, where you were feeling lack or loss. Something's being returned to you of equal or greater measure or someone, a better relationship than what you had. You know, um, all of those things, sorts of things. And the outcome. Celebration, happiness, joy, reconciliation, reunion. You have an exciting reason to celebrate, such as an engagement, wedding, graduation, or birth announcement. Wedding. We, we see all of that here. Remember to cherish those you love. I think with these other cards, with the advice, I'm going to... Um, do them by element. So the first one will be the Keepers of the Light Oracle, beginning with uh, Green Tara, who's another one of these sort of Empress-like um, energies, very motherly, and you see all the earth uh, energy by which she's surrounded as well, all the flowers and plants and, and green. Uh, green is about is a color of abundance. Um, as well as heart chakra. Supreme protection. You are protected. Cords are being cut. Move beyond limitation. Trust. So again, that, that feeling of being stuck, whether it is because of the two of swords or the eight of swords, this is saying we're being released from whatever that is. Um, behind that, the next card is Mercury. It's in reverse, but it's, it's Mercury. There's Ganesha. Okay. He's the whole reason I pulled this deck out. Infinite abundance. Obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. Wonderful. So we'll just give these a little bit of a mix up. Okay, Krishna, devotion. Paul, the Venetian, experiencing grace. Um, actually, on the 7th of the month. November 7th is the feast day of Mary, the Mediatrix of Grace. So that may be tied to this. Share your gifts with grace. Waves of inspiration and love are coming to you. And boom, <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. I mentioned Mary, here she is, right? Love and peace. Let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. And Freya, phases and cycles. There is a beginning within every ending. Illusions are being revealed and released. I think on that note with the moon, that's a good place to stop. 
and she will be our overall energy. All right, beginning with the fire signs, okay, because the zodiac begins with the sign of Aries. Aries, your card is Lady Nada, heart awakening. Awaken to acceptance and divine love. Give and receive in balance. I'm sorry, I said Aries, this is your card. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, this is your card. I'm sorry. Uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Kuan Yin, care and compassion. Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. I feel like these are answers to questions you guys have had. Like, what should I do in this situation, in that situation? Um, my fellow air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius... Our card is the Shekinah Self. Unleash your spirit. Express your gifts. Dance to the sacred rhythm of life. If you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance, is what comes through with that too. And lastly, but not least, uh, water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Your card is Master Buddha. Increased awareness. We saw all those moons, right? That is, again, increased psychic ability, probably particularly for you guys. Deep connection. Trust your inner voice. And now also life purpose. These cards, I had pulled out the two decks that I wanted to use, closed the drawer. It didn't close. I said, what's going on here? And I hadn't heard or seen anything fall, but sure enough, life purpose, I had to reach back and pull it out. And I said, oh, maybe I'm meant to use these too. So we're beginning with flowers. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to others through your life purpose. So I think this is about connecting with the earth energy as well. But for some, it could be literal, working with flowers or giving flowers or receiving flowers during this time. Also, heart's desires. The angels are supporting, guiding, and protecting you as your dreams become a reality. You're on the right path. Keep keep doing what you're doing because it's working. And books, you are connected or you connect to your life purpose through your involvement with books, whether this is reading and getting more educated on something or writing yourself. All right, those are the only ones that are upright. Opening to strength, some more of this Leo kind of energy. Everything you've experienced in your life has made you strong and courageous. flowers study so this could be you reading books again writing books or doing research reading research and education help you to gain confidence and clarity about your career flowers environmentalists you are an earth angel who was born to protect nature and to teach about nature and the animals i think that's the taurus energy right there Maybe that's a good place to stop. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, your card from this deck is energy healing. Your natural energy healing abilities are an important part of your life purpose. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, crystals. Your connection to crystals and gemstones is a channel for healing energy. Air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Practice. Polish your skills by practicing regularly. And water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Builder. Your innate ability to build and create brings you a deep sense of accomplishment. So there's the creative, creative energy. And one more, it's another one that I think Ganesha appears in, beginning with persistence, Lou. Opening to focus upon your strengths, Apollo. So more of that strength, it's so important, that Leo energy right now, it's crazy. The power of joy and Maitreya. Crystals, again, Epona. Go now, Serapis Bay. So if we've been hesitant about something, could be tied to the Two of Swords. Again, waiting, procrastination. 
Just go and choose peace. I think I'll start, stop there. Um, fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, your card is see the other person's point of view. Could very well be tied to page of swords, king of swords that we saw before. If you've been blocking, you know, somebody out or they've been doing it to you, it's time to like listen and open ourselves up to other perspectives. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Priorities, says King Solomon. This is what you guys are all about, making a plan and following it. Like be you, get into your energy if, you, if you've been off or something. Air, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, air signs. Clear and shield your energy. And lastly, water signs. Positive change, says Parvati. So this is more like wheel energy. She even seems to have a wheel behind her. You see, it looks like a ship's wheel that, that you, you know, direct the boat with or something. So I think that's another like wheel of fortune for you guys. I hope that you all have enjoyed this full moon reading. I will be back with the love reading. What was that? Did you just see those things move? Okay. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that. I do appreciate it. If you subscribe, um, please do hit both the subscribe button and the bell button so that you'll hopefully receive your notifications. Thank you. Namaste.